Welcome to Magnolia United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Brad Chamberlain. This is our service for February 12th, 2023. Hope everybody enjoys the big romantic holiday of Super Bowl Sunday no, and Valentine's Day. Not talking about either of them today. This is still, we're still in epiphany season. I've been trying to focus our services on the idea that God really is actually with us that God Emmanuel that we celebrated back at Christmas is a reality and what it means to live into that reality. A big part of it is that we're meant to integrate our spiritual and our physical selves, to integrate our inside world and how we act in the outside world because we believe that God is real and really with us in this inside world. And that means that we can act from that into the outside world. So we move away from compartmentalization and we move towards fullness, towards wholeness. Today we continue to look at this integration or integrity. Join me in today's call to worship. Happy are those who walk in God's ways. Blessed are those who observe God's commandments. Faithful are those whose eyes are fixed on righteousness. Joyful are those whose hearts are filled with praise. Come, let us love the Lord our God. We come to worship the one who leads us in the ways of life. Today's Old Testament reading is from Psalm 119, verses 1 to 8. Joyful are people of integrity who follow the instructions of the Lord. Joyful are those who obey his laws and search for him with all their hearts. They do not compromise with evil, and they walk only in his paths. You have charged us to keep your commandments carefully. Oh, that my actions would consistently reflect your decrees. Then I would, will not be ashamed when I compare my life with your commands. As I learn your righteous regulations, I will thank you by living as I should. I will obey your decrees. Please don't give up on me. Let's pray this confession of sin together. Almighty God, we confess that we have taken your commandments and turned them into rules. We have criticized those who have fallen short and selfishly proclaimed ourselves as righteous. We have failed to understand the spirit of the commandments and the way that was shown by you to live, loving God and loving our neighbors. Forgive us for turning your law into burdens for others and ourselves instead of a way to love and freedom in you. In the name of Christ, who has given us the way and leads us on, we pray. Amen. And now, where you are, spend some time confessing your sins before God. You are loved. Love is the way. And when you love God, you love others. When you truly lay down your life for others, you lay down your life for God. Give yourself to God by serving others. Know that in God's love there is forgiveness, healing, and reconciliation. Amen. We so appreciate all of you who are watching the service, participating at Magnolia United Methodist Church uh, through our online services. Please consider offering and helping support the ministries here for Magnolia United Methodist Church. You can give your tithes through a check sent to the address shown or online at umcmagnolia.com. Let's pray together for this week's offering. Holy God, as we offer to you gifts from the abundance you have provided us, we recognize that the offering that concerns you is more than what is in our wallets and purses, but in our hearts. You desire from us hearts that are a fit place for you to live and dwell. Help us to clear out long-held anger, resentments, 
prejudice, and hate. Help us to furnish our hearts with love, mercy, justice, compassion, and forgiveness, so they might be a place where you feel welcome and at home. Help us present this offering as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Gospel reading this morning is from Matthew 5, verses 21 to 37. You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, You shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you, that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or a sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So when you are offering your guilt at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are on the way to court with him well, you're on the way to court with him, or your accuser may hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will never get out until you've paid the last penny. You've heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It's better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to th be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It's better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to go into hell. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that anyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of sexual immorality, causes her to commit adultery, and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not swear falsely, but carry out the vows you have made to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let your word be yes, yes, or no, no. Anything more than that comes from the evil one. So back in 2004, Wendy and I ended up living in Duncanville, Texas on the outskirts of Dallas. Well, I finished my master's degree. We were going to be there for about a year. The opportunity came along, thanks to a generous offer from my mother-in-law, for us to buy a home. We ended up getting a lovely little townhouse, which served as a home base for us when we'd come back to the USA, which always involved a stint of working at the Summer Institute of Linguistics offices or at the university there in Duncanville area. And so it made sense, and we, we went ahead and went for it. Um, when we'd head back overseas, you know, we could rent the place out. It worked well over the years. When we first entered this one particular townhouse that we ended up getting, we entered with the real estate and we were in love with this townhouse from first sight. Two levels, tall ceilings, room for all four of us, plus a home office, an extremely rentable location, and best of all, no yard, for us or tenants to have to worry about, yet it backed right up to a large private park owned by the community, by the Homeowners Association. So for our kids, they could head out the back door and have all sorts of space to play. It wasn't bad. But there was this one funny little feature in the living room. Right in the middle of a fairly prominent wall, there was a closet. And when you open the closet, inside there was a sink, and the back wall of the closet was mirrored and had fancy lighting and glass shelves. It was a fancy little bar, hidden away behind this door. <laughs> we asked the real estate agent what this was, and, oh, she said, that's the Baptist bar. 
Most of the houses around here have them. Literally, the houses are made with a fancy bar because, you know, pretty much everybody actually does drink, but they close it off so you don't see them because everybody hides that they actually drink. We were dumbfounded. We got the townhouse and proceeded to remove the doors from the bar. We filled it with wine glasses and a couple bottles of wine on the shelves and then stuff for making cocoa and other fun drinks for the kids down low. And the house, <laughs> you know, the houses were literally made to encourage a lack of integrity. Some sort of inside world, outside world divide in the hearts of the people who own them. Somehow encouraging behavior that I guess people think is wrong, but covering it up with sort of a wink, wink, nod, nod, so that they can still project some kind of silly idea of righteousness. It kind of embodies the same thing as a family with abuse running rampant, dressing up all fancy and acting all proper when they get to church. The issue God cares about isn't the fancy clothes or acting proper. It's about the content within that we hide away, that festers within us and spills out into relationships with those we love, with people in our neighborhood, even with our relationship with God. And, you know, today's Bible verses from the lectionary that we read earlier, they are all about this, but maybe in a way more serious way. They are about integrating our inside life and our outside life. We've talked about the interconnectedness of our physical and spiritual selves. This can be seen in the general dilemma which Jesus is always speaking into. How do we live out lives of love as citizens of the eternal reign? Well, here, in these current circumstances, under what the Bible often refers to as the power of the world. And what we are called to is to integrate Integration of body and spirit allows, now and forever, it allows us to live with integrity. Integrity can be a pretty preachy and judgmental and even manipulative word in church circles, but what Jesus models through his life and explains through his teachings is all about this need to integrate our physical and spiritual selves, to fully live out our faith as full participants in this world. And as we fully live out our faith, we become transformative in the world, one person at a time, moving towards that eternal reign, which is found not through military conquest, but through humility, in the spirit of one person at a time. Today's reading from Psalm 119 states, Joyful are people of integrity who follow the instructions of the Lord. We are called to this integrity. In these verses from the Psalms, integrity is spoken of as living consistently with the law. And you know, the law, it was guidelines set for the people of Israel to help them live in accordance with God's eternal reign. Because people from the beginning of existence of people have struggled to not give in to our own selfishness and individual needs. We've struggled to do good by each other. We're like... I don't know, contestants on Survivor, constantly juggling our own survival, which sometimes requires focusing just on self, but also we absolutely need a community. We need the tribe around us. And so we have to make compromises that sometimes go against ourselves in order to fit into that community, which we so desperately rely on. That's humanity. And we certainly struggle between what we feel like are our own needs and entrusting God. These laws were set up as guidelines for helping this happen. The laws were set as pointers towards integrity, towards how to live in harmony with self, others, and with God. So, joyful are people of integrity, and joyful are those who obey his laws. They only walk on God's paths, not their own. But, you know, it's hard to do. Easy to say, hard to do. And the psalmist says, Oh, that my actions would cons consistently reflect your decrees. I will obey your decrees. I will live with consistency. But, you know, please don't give up with me. Please don't give up on me, it says. It's a struggle. So, 
the lectionary also brought us the second verse, a really long section from Matthew 5, which I feel like it really picks up from Psalm 119. And yeah, okay, let's just say it. It has a few sticky points within it, which make it hard to digest as a whole without getting pulled away by distractions. Let's try to plod on through it and see if we can get to the overall focus of this verse, which I believe is about living with integrity. I will address a couple of the sticky points and just try not to get bogged down in them too deeply. The first section, which in this translation has a heading concerning anger, it demonstrates integrity. It demonstrates living out loud that which is in you to not be hypocritical. But, you know, deal with the baggage that's within you and then live that out loud. Don't live the baggage out loud. That's the whole point. Meet Jesus and Jesus' love and then live that out. So living with integrity is more than just do not murder. It is do not live with anger festering inside of you. Because when that spills out into relationships, it's a big problem. But even more, that anger is burning away inside of you, destroying you, even like the fires of Gehenna. Okay, so the word often translated as hell in these passages is Gehenna. Gehenna refers to a real geographical location, a valley outside of Jerusalem. It was a place of human sacrifice to locally worshipped gods in pre-Israelite times. And so the valley already had a taboo around it when the Israelites came into the area. By Jesus' time, this unusable land became Jerusalem's garbage pit. Refuse was dumped there and burnt, and it smoldered perpetually, belching smelly smoke out into the surroundings. So, <laughs> all right, let's ask it. Is Jesus talking about eternal torment here? I'm inclined to say no. When he says, if you say to another, you fool, that is, when you cut another down, it's an indication that things are not right within you, that you are harboring resentment and anger, and that resentment and anger is going to burn and fester and stink within you, just as the garbage pits of Gehenna do. That festering inside you will seep out into everything you do, just as the stench of Gehenna seeps out and fills the air around it. It will make you and those around you miserable. And then, in the passage, there's a short bit about court and about reconciling with your accuser as quickly as possible. Don't let the rot of resentment and grudge and worry even fester away inside of you. It will only lead to trouble. Better to deal with what's in you, to move towards living in integrity between your heart and God's love. And then the next section gets a passage titled, Concerning Adultery. And again, the act of adultery is it's certainly a problem, but the source of that problem is what needs to be dealt with here. It's what's in your heart, your lack of integrity between your will and God's law, or maybe between your worldly self and your spiritual self. Be consistent. Stop being a hypocrite. Clean up that junk inside of you, and then live love out loud. If you don't, you will live your festering garbage pit out loud. If you can't control your heart, then if your eye is messing things up for you, pluck out your eye, Jesus says. It's better to lose an eye than to walk around with the festering garbage pit of Gehenna smoldering away within you. Follow the principles of God's eternal reign internally as well as externally. Integrate. Then next we get to... Uh, I don't know, kind of uncomfortable bit about divorce. Something people use to keep people from getting divorced. But thank God that our church culture has shifted over the past few decades and stopped being so legalistic about this section because, <laughs> well, just thank God that now women are able to have more autonomy, more personal rights, more freedom to move to safety when they are in abusive situations. Just more autonomy. This verse, first and foremost, even as written, is about setting up protections for women. In the patriarchal, misogynistic culture, 
that it was written into. This rule helped prevent men from simply divorcing their wife on a whim, leaving her unmarriable and without financial security. You men can't just lust after someone else, or for whatever reason, just move on based on your whims. In a culture where women had no power, these verses afford some power and position back to women. <laughs> I would say not nearly enough, but still a radical amount for the time. And in the context in which we are talking about integrity from our hearts to our actions, the issue being called out here is men who are living fantasy lives and want to act on those fantasies. It's simply a continuation of the portion just above concerning adultery, because you know what? The book, as written by Matthew, it did not have section headings. It just flows straight from adultery to the whole divorce bit, which is still about adultery. You, sir, it's saying, are thinking these thoughts in your head and they are festering within you and this leads you to adultery and to divorce. But the problem is not with her. The problem is with the festering garbage fires in your own heart, consuming you and the people around you. Deal with that. Then, when your heart is clean, live your heart out loud. Integrate. No more inside versus outside worlds. No more selfishness versus God's reign. No more me versus God. And finally, finally we get to the section concerning oaths. The law, the outward focused social standard, it says, you shall not swear falsely, but carry out any vows you make. Okay, not bad. But that's just setting yourself up to be a hypocrite. Jesus says, don't swear on God or heaven or Jerusalem or your own self or your family because you don't control any of those things. And in any case, in each case, you will almost certainly fall short at some point and you can't and you won't follow through on the repercussions of what you swore. So you are just setting yourself up to be a hypocrite. Don't swear at all. Let your yes be yes, and your no be no. Let people know that your yes, like be a person whose yes is yes, and whose no is no. There's no need to swear. Keep it simple, stupid. Don't build up accounts you know you will fail at because the worrying of falling short, or the knowledge of how you have fallen short, and maybe the fear of others finding out, it will burn at your heart just like the fires in that valley over there, just keep burning through Jerusalem's garbage, filling the air with stench. So live eternity now. This life, this eternal life, it's not for later. Live consistent with what you know to be right in all things now, not later. Live with integrity. If you don't, it will burn away inside of you and it will spread out into all of your human relationships and it will become it will come between you and your ability to understand and accept God's grace and love and mercy and being able to accept God's grace and love and mercy that it says is where joy is found from today's psalm joyful are the people of integrity who follow the instructions of the Lord and we need help. Thank God for the Holy Spirit walking with us, for Jesus showing us the path. Amen, Lord, like the psalmist says, please don't give up on me. Receive the blessing. God has placed before you life and death, blessings and curses. Therefore, choose life. Follow God's way. Go now and be a people of reconciliation and integrity. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. And in all the paths you walk, may God hold you steady and close. May Christ Jesus bless you and every place you enter. And may the Spirit give you length of days and fullness of life. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. 
In the name of Christ, amen. Okay, bye. We'll see you next week.